Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we are in the data center and I have a little package here behind me a good old subscriber of me Hank um, has been communicating with me over at Twitter and now that I am talking about Twitter please go um, follow me at Twitter um, it, it helps well Hank has run into a bit of a problem with a battery in his uh, rate controller it's no good no more and I just happen to have a battery here that is definitely no good no more let's see that this is a rate controller from a generation 3 of the Lenovo X3650 well then it's the model 3 and it's the M5015 and this one is from back in 2010 and I have actually just opened this box it's brand new but even though it's brand new uh, the battery is right here and I can already see that this is quite swollen so um, this battery has never been in use let's get it out of there um, there uh, it has swallowed up so that uh, this is a lithium ion cell that is on there so the idea is that you take this board and you mount it on top of the rake controller and the rake controller is right down here there look at that brand new so the rake controller is here you mount that um, and there is some plugs here on the back that needs to go into the to the rake controller and this uh, powers the rake controller in the um, event of a power failure so everything that has been written to the rake controller that the rake controller hasn't written to disk yet will be stored on these chips here uh, yeah and if it loses power well the battery will maintain that I think for 72 hours until hopefully the server is powered back on again and the rate controller can write that missing data down to the disk and purge it from the rate controller so but the battery is definitely not meant to look like this so um, Hank was um, was looking at this these are quite expensive this battery is well it's unreasonably expensive so I thought well it's just a lithium ion cell that is in here so why don't we go to the basement and see if we can just replace that um, and this one is definitely not pretty it's supposed to run flush I do actually have another card that we can see where it's considerably better so here is a card where it is mounted and you can see the battery is not it's not bad at all well well this one is like bouching up quite a bit so yeah let's go to the basement and see what's inside of that I have moved down into the basement and I think we should try and get rid of this sticker that is on here uh, it seems like they have uh, they have I think the best thing I can do would be to get a little knife and just cut a slice in it mm -hmm. so if we are gonna play search in here we might as well get some tools that looks a little bit like a search in uh, what's this one looks funny we'll try that one there let's see which side is hmm. probably this side is the easiest so. Okay, that was pretty easy. So let's see what we get. <laughs> we get the model number. <laughs> Not very much on the battery, but a lot of it is on the tape. So, okay. 
So we have one single lithium ion cell here. Um, very much uh, expanded. And I hope you have seen the video where I took uh, some of these cells outside and poked a garden tool right through them to show that, well, it didn't do much. It just, well, it didn't do anything at all, actually. So let's get this nice piece of tape off there so we can... This looks very simple. Let's look like there is just that one battery and there's a plus and a minus. So replacing that battery, well, um, it's, it's gonna be a short video. And I think these batteries, well, they're easy 50 to $100 each. So it's well worth it if we can put something else in here. And it looks like it's just, that, that's the plus side and that's the minus side. So plus and minus. Let's get a multimeter and see what the voltage is on this one. That was plus, that was minus. Do we have that in view? I think it's good enough. So we have absolutely nothing. We have 0 0.001 of a volt. That's not too much. So can we get this battery out of there? It looks like it's taped. It might. This is some heat resistant tape and then it's uh, soldered on there. So I think we'll solder it off. I'm going to turn on the soldering iron. And we are going to solder it off here and uh, yeah, get it out of there. I have no idea if I have anything to replace this with. Okay, so I lifted it up. Let's see if we can get some of this tape off. Got that one off. Okay, so we have the metal here. Let's see if we can get that off. There are some small components on this side. Oh, that was too easy. There we are. Let's see. Plus over there, minus over here. And it does say positive and it says positive and negative there, so that should be manageable. Um, when I tried to get this battery out, I kind of poked my... Uh, oh, it's it's there's two layers here. That's I've never seen that before. Double safety, maybe? No, not really. Hmm. Okay, never mind. A funny thing, when you poke a hole into these, there is like a sweet smell. They, they smell very sweet. So that's a weird thing. I'm not sure how big this battery is. There are some markings on here, and I'm sure that I would be able to go up and figure that out, how, how much power this has, and the size of it and everything. But I have a smaller one. Uh, this one that's I think it's from a little mobile phone a lithium ion battery uh, what what will happen if we use a smaller one it even has a little uh, protective circuit here um, probably not really needed uh, we could remove the little circuit and just go directly on to the leads here be a better idea than using the little protective circuit. I kind of have a whole box of those. Um, got those really cheap at some point. I think I paid one Danish crowner each. Uh, here's another one. It's a bit thicker. Um, don't remember. I, I got this from a subscriber. Uh, also it has a little protective circuit. That could also go in here. Um, but it would be bending up again so well but let's um let's measure this see if there is any voltage on it um and if not we will probably have to to put a bit of voltage on there so multimeter absolutely no voltage on that either i will uh, remove this little protective circuit um all of this is one big protective circuit so that should be protective circuit enough so let's remove this protective circuit. Okay, there is even a little fuse there. Ooh. 
let's cut that. We might need some of those metal things there. See if um, if we can figure out what is plus and minus here. Ah, should have measured that. Oh, we do actually have a voltage here. So that's the wrong way around. So there is almost two volts here. So we can charge it. This this one is plus then. That's gonna work really well. It's just gonna be sitting there and that's gonna be plus, that's gonna be minus. So cool. This battery is 3.7 volts. It's 620 milliamp hours so it's probably smaller than the the one that was in there but smaller is better than none i'm gonna take off these leads here for this battery maybe we should measure if there is anything on the battery now that it's disconnected nothing okay and we're gonna solder them on up here and we just need to mount them to, to these don't think do we need we don't need that get rid of that thing Oh, it's that. It has tape. Cool. So we can just mount it on the bottom here now. <laughs> That's. Oh, it has a little, a little heat sensor here as well. Oh, that's not gonna be long enough anymore. Eh. Okay, then I have to move the battery closer. Ah. Uh. Okay, this looks pretty good, um, so I'm gonna solder this on there, these little strips here. I think I have a connection there as well, if we can measure a voltage in there it should be good. So let's try that. Negative and positive, and we have 1.925 volts. I'm gonna charge this a little bit with my laboratory power supply because we really want to see about three volts or something like. I should have charged that battery before we started. That would have been a genius move. Okay, I set the voltage at my on my laboratory power supply to about 3.7 volts, and I have measure that with my multimeter here to make sure that it is 3.7 volts so we're gonna disconnect that and we're gonna just put the leads on here and charge it a little bit uh, this way and it's taking a charge it's charging with half an amp uh, which might be a little bit too much uh, we don't have all day okay i'm gonna turn it down ever so slightly Minus and plus. Yeah. Now it's charging with about, uh, about 350 milliamps. Okay, I have let this charge for a little bit, so uh, now it's not taking in a charge anymore. So probably it's good by now. So take the, the charge off. There. And we will see what the voltage has come to if we're lucky we're at 3.5 volts uh, 3.3.7 actually and we're at 3.002 it's cool so we're done uh, i think we'll put some of this tape back on just cover that up a little bit so it looks professional <clears throat> of course it's not now this is a ninja hack i don't know i don't think i should recommend this but well if you're a cheapskate like me 
uh, it might just save you oh that's that piece is too big I'll stuff it down there fine there so I'm pretty sure this battery is good now so um, to my good old subscriber Hank um, that would be my best um, way to fix that instead of going out and using another hundred dollars to get a new battery or fifty dollars so well they are expensive so. cool uh, here is of course another solution could just mount a couple of um, 18 650 on top of there put those in parallel and good to go but well, I'm not sure it might be too much there is a charging circuit in here somewhere and if we use up the battery if the, if the rate controller is actually using the battery and it's then plugged back in well it might damage something if it has to try and charge up these batteries um, not sure okay it's the next day I uh, wasn't feeling too good yesterday so um, this uh, solution changing out the battery is of course not something that you do with a server in a critical production area this is something that you do when you're playing along at home and um, don't want to use the 100 dollars 50 to 100 dollars on a new battery unit ninja hacks like this um, they are not for the professional environment they are for home tangling with servers um, you never know what could happen if you do this and this doesn't go well I'll be sure to try this in the server next next time I'm gonna be playing with a model 3 and this rate controller which again is the M5015 um, awesome rate controller I must uh, say so uh, well and visit me over at Twitter where Hank um, commented on this and sent me pictures of his problem so um, well I am on Twitter Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. And have a really nice day. Bye bye.